Hi, I'm Mike Norsha from Ram Clutches. Today we're going to take a look at setting up the hydraulic release bearing or slave cylinder in your late model vehicle. Now, taking the time to do these measurements and calculations on the front end of your job can certainly save you a whole bunch of work on the back end by making sure everything's installed correctly. Now, the first measure we need to take is how far the crank flange is sticking out from the back of the engine block. And to check that, we'll take a straight bar and we'll lay it across the crank flange and then we'll measure from our straight bar down to the back of the block where the bell housing is going to mount. Now, if you're using a block plate between the bell housing and the engine you want to make sure you have that in place when you take this measurement. This is dimension A on our drawing. Now we want to take our measurements to determine what the bearing position is in the bell housing. Here you have a, a typical bell housing and front transmission plate. We're going to lay our straight bar across the bell housing, measure straight down to the bearing face. I want to make sure when we're doing this that once we're done we go ahead and measure the thickness of the straight bar and we subtract that out to gain that bearing position. We'll record this as dimension D on our drawing. Now what we need to do is compress our bearing and measure once again from our straight bar down to the bearing and this will give us our compressed bearing position which is dimension B on the drawing. Now taking dimension B and subtracting dimension D can give us what the actual movement or throw of the bearing is. The final dimension is going to be the overall height of the clutch, and this is with the complete clutch assembly bolted together. We're going to set this up on a flat spacer so that we make sure we're measuring right to the crank flange itself. Um, I've got a flat here, in this case I'm using a clutch hub, and I'm going to measure all the way down through the clutch through the discs to my spacer, and this will give me that overall height of the clutch. Once again, you want to make sure that you subtract the thickness of whatever it is you're using to center your measuring device there so that you're getting the actual thickness of the clutch. So now let's do some easy math. If we first take our dimension for the crank flange, which is 0.300, and our overall height of the clutch, which is 3.051, that's going to give us a total height of the clutch from the back of the engine of 3.351. Now taking that overall height of the clutch, 3.351, and subtracting our D dimension, or uncompressed bearing height, of 2.600 is going to leave us with a preload number of 0 0.750, or 3 quarters of an inch. So how far does this bearing have a potential movement? Well, subtracting those D and B numbers, we come up with a number of 0 0.980 as the potential travel. So consequently, looking at those two numbers, that's going to leave us about 230 thousandths before that bearing is going to bottom out and give us plenty of room for the clutch to wear over time. If that number gets too small, we're not going to have enough room for that clutch to wear, and eventually what's going to happen is the discs break in, the fingers are going to move back, contact the bearing, and unload the clutch and cause it to slip. The minimum number for this preload that you're looking for is going to be about 0.500. So if the case was that we were lower than that, say 480, or right around 500, then we may need to come back and put a shim or a spacer behind the bearing um, to try to get that number up in the range somewhere over 500 but somewhere probably under about 750 to 780. So as you can see this is really a simple procedure to perform and if you're a professional installer once you do this one time you're going to be able to do it real quick from then on out plus as you do different vehicles you're going to get a pretty good idea on what's involved in each one.